Hello, everybody, and welcome to David Sidhu Field at the University of British Columbia for this USL match between Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 and Sacramento Republic FC. Craig McEwen, Mark Rogers. What has it been? About a month and a half since we've uh, done this. It's it's been quite some time. We mu moved from August into September, and uh, the weather's changed a little bit, and uh, we're back doing this. Well, summer went off with uh, with <laughs> the flash of, uh, of a switch. So the nice thing is at least the sun came out. It's been the first time all week, and it's a beautiful conditions to play a game, Craig. And two good footballing sides sets up perfectly for a nice game of football today. Now, Marco Bustos has continued to progress and, and seems to be getting better and better as the season rolls along. For such a young player, they have such high hopes for this kid. And I know uh, playing in, in this type of environment is what's going to make get him to that next level, which is the MLS. He hasn't disappointed, especially on the road of late. He's had six goals for such a young player. It's a great return for the USL level. He did very well at the start of the extended road trip, getting named to the team of the week twice, and uh, he will be a key part of what Alan Koch's side does here this afternoon against Sacramento. As a number 10, he's a classic number 10. He's great in small spaces, especially once he gets the ball and gets turned at the opposing back four. Causes all sorts of problems. Very tidy customer. And today it's another it's another chance for him to show off what he's been doing on the road at home. Declan Wynn yeah. gets the uh, first start here since uh, signing with the club recently. Yeah, and it's great. It's a good opportunity for the young man from New Zealand. I had a great chat with Alan Koch about him, and he, he speaks very highly about the kit. Left-footed, likes to get forward, very adventurous. But, of course, the transition from being a young player into a professional environment is a physical one. And uh, the tat will be his test today. Being his debut, I think, for him, just be, keep the ga his game simple and grow from the first minute so that by the end of the game, he's really flying. Sacramento has probably one of the best players in the league. Someone we'll have to keep an eye on here is Rodrigo Lopez. Yeah, I mean, he is a tidy, tidy player. And, you know, the tag of one of the best players in the league is a very, very fair one. In all competitions this year from the center of the park, he has 11 goals and six assists. That is an outstanding return. And having watched him play a number of times now, he really goes wherever he needs to to get on the ball and get Sacramento playing forward. They're an expansive team. They love to play in possession, and they like to send up bodies forward into the attack. I expect this set to set up very well, Craig, at two very adventurous sides in possession. We will break things down a little further. Talk more about this matchup here in a few moments. But before we do that, we will be heading down to the pitch for the singing of both the Canadian and American national anthem. WFC2 has made this stadium its home, a very tough place to play. And when you look at that, I think Alan Koch has, has done a good job of, of bringing that mentality of, of making this a, a good spot for them. They score three goals on average a game at home and uh, about 1.1 on the road. So there's a real difference. They feel really comfortable here at Thunderbird Stadium. And usually where it comes from is just a real urgency and a real drive and a real speed in their attack. When it, they send, tend to go lull themselves to sleep with slower possession, that's when they've had a tougher time. But boy, when they've come out of the gates fast, especially against their Cascadia rivals here, Craig, they've had good returns and very entertaining games. Both sides now making their way out into the middle of the pitch. WFC2 wearing the all-white kit. Sac Republic FC. Wearing, would you call that maroon? Yes, I'd call that a lighter sh or darker shade of maroon, Craig. Almost a Vancouver Millionaires oh. color. We'll go down now for the singing of both national anthems. Twilight's light. 
stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star A beautiful Labor Day weekend in Vancouver. An opportunity for the locals to catch a glimpse of a WFC2 side that has spent a lot of time on the road. And even with the big club, the Vancouver Whitecaps, the games are coming fast and furious. It almost seems like forever since either side played. That's right. And the management between Alan Koch, Carl Robinson, and the first team would have had to have been razor sharp over the last month. Seen a lot of player rotation at the MLS level. And what that means is Alan Koch had to rely on a lot of his younger players, which is exact, it's a perfect scenario for them because that's the first priority is the development aspect of this environment. Today, it's all about finishing the season with a bit of a plum. Uh, you'll see the rosters will probably indicate what they're kind of thinking towards next season, Craig, uh, with some of their younger players. Who, who's going to come in, probably who they're going to focus on. And uh, although they're not mathematically out of the playoffs, they're certainly up against it. I think it's more important for them at this stage to have a few positive uh, results at home, get going again, and uh, audition some of their younger players and make sure that they're given an opportunity at the end of the season to show what they got. We take a look at the starting 11 for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2, Alan Koch. A few different faces than maybe what we saw last July when they were uh, here before. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the players that have been probably started in the USL environment and mixed in with a few of their young players. I mean, we already highlighted Bustos. He's had a fantastic spell at the USL level, but you know, the Caleb Clark is a guy that's going to want to finish this season on a high note. He wants to make sure that he leaves him with a positive taste in the mouth uh, in, after the USL season's uh, finished. And, you know, he's got his seven goals and four assists. It's not a bad return, but he'll want to definitely add to that. And I think just the thing is, Craig, is it's going to, you'll see a lot of the same things you see at the MLS level here. You're going to see a 4-2-3-1, which is a standard formation for Carl Robinson. And a very similar style of play. They're good on the counterattack, and when they're incisive and uh, deliberate with their possession, boy, they can create a lot of chances. As for the visiting Sacramento Republic FC, a group that is, as you said, knocking on that playoff door and, and obviously had a fantastic year last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's been a bit of a tougher tougher sledding this year for the Republic. And they, as you see, they're set up in a 4-4-2. But often it, you'll, you'll probably notice it's more or less a 4-4-1-1. And you'll see uh, number 10, Stewart, dropping into more of a number 10 position, trying to get on ball in a little bit more diff deep area so we can get turned and supply some service into Braun up front. 
Tommy Thompson, another player to keep an eye on who's been loaned to Sacramento from San Jose in Major League Soccer. Boy, and he's an attacking, he loves getting at fullbacks one on one. You'll see, see he'll drift off the line into no more narrow areas to expose people into those one on one situations. A very tidy player, and they have high hopes for him at San Jose. Justin Braun now. Another familiar name for those of you who follow soccer in North America. Gets an early touch. Clementa. Plays it square. Caleb Clark does well to win that ball back. Lewis now closed down quickly. And right away you see the press of Sacramento. Yeah, and the, you'll see the same thing from the Caps, I expect, when uh, the Republic get ball in possession in their own third. I think it's going to be a nice open game. Two teams that really want to keep the ball and uh, attack with intent. Seymour gets it back from Sandu. And that ball all the way back to Farmer, who goes square to Nitty. Declan Wynn. We talked about in the opening, loses possession. And now the Republic tries to push forward. As mentioned, Declan will just want to settle into his first appearance here, keeping it by keeping it simple. You see, he just dwelt on it a little bit there, gave the Sacramento player an opportunity to nick it off him. And then even there, maybe if you just turn the defense, I know it may not be the most pretty ball, but at the same time, it's just simplify your game, get, allows you to take a few deep breaths and settle in a little bit more nicely. Republic keeping possession, knocking it about. Thompson getting his first touch. See how narrow he's coming to get on the ball, Craig. He's drifting right off the line, allowing his fullback a huge channel to get into. Really it allows Sacramento to send more bodies forward and, and ask a lot of questions between the center back, the holding midfielder, and the fullback. Communication isn't clear there. That's when he'll be able to get on the ball and get turned. Rodrigo Lopez. Over for the corner kick. For Sacramento. Plays it to the top of the 18. That ball's whipped in, but grabbed nicely there by Paulo Tornagi. Yeah, comfortable for Paulo. It's the type of delivery to, to get uh, at the beginning of the game that really helps a goalkeeper settle. Easy catch, easy take. Farmer up and winning that header. Lewis battling Lopez there. Wonderful first touch by Lopez. You can already see some of his first touches and his intent when he gets the ball to his feet. Why he's so highly thought of. Braun looking to get onto that, but Nitty strong in the challenge, but then doesn't deliver a pass and it's turned over. Braun. We've seen a few teams come up here to UBC and sit back. Definitely not the case with Sacramento or pushing hard in the opening minutes here at UBC. Yeah, and they they really are a difficult team to get a grasp of from a possession standpoint. They interchange positions. Their starting positions vary. You saw Thompson coming well off the touch line to come narrow and put himself in a question asking position. And uh, the Caps from a defensive standpoint are really going to have to be on their communication. Pushing hard sure in the opening. Players are taking it, uh, account for. Thompson again on it. Minutes here. Plays it forward to Braun. Continues his run. Referee Marquez allows play to continue. You see, even see there, Craig, they're very familiar with each other. How deep Braun came as a classic number nine, almost a target number nine. 
how deep he comes to get on the ball. And again, the two center halves are going, do we go, do we stay? And in the end, he gets turned and, and you know, really walks the ball into the final third and gets into a position that can hurt you. So again, the Caps just really have to be on their game. They won't want to give away anything this early. Um, and put themselves in a position where they have to chase. Lopez nods that. Tries to get on the end of it. It's out for a throw in. The Sacramento franchise, for those not familiar in the Vancouver area, do very well. They have some supporters that have traveled up here this Labor Day weekend. We saw during the national anthems. And a club that's pushing and has hopes for maybe a major league soccer entry down. Well, they're putting everything together in the right way. And uh, if, they're gonna, if that's going to be their resume to MLS, 14,000 home fans and a bit of traveling support won't go, won't hurt them any. But also from a footballing standpoint, they play some nice stuff and it's an ent they're an entertaining group to watch. And we had a lot of credit for Tulsa when they came into town, very organized defensively, but definitely not as easy on the eye as what we're seeing here from Sacramento early. And you're seeing their pace as well, how quickly they are to balls. And that's fantastic work from Caleb Clark. You know, they have had very little possession so far, the young white caps too. But that just relieves the pressure on him a little bit. You know, he holds it up, he's nice and strong. Draws the foul, Craig, and now, look, they can get, they can get into an attacking area themselves. Haynes whips across in. That ball's cut out. Not a lot of support inside the 18. Seymour there on the challenge on Braun and referee Marquez will have a word. I'll tell you what, Craig, that was a bit of a naughty one. He's gone to ground. The minute you show your studs like that and you get that scissor motion in your tackle, you're asking for a booking and you see he's, he's late. He's come right through and I'll tell you what, he's a lucky boy not to get something a little more severe than just a foul there. James Kiffey. Sends that forward for Stewart. Well defended by Sandu. Good recovery. You know, we just saw, saw earlier Whitecaps got into a good area. And if it's going to be as few and far between as it has been earlier, they're going to have to really take advantage of those opportunities, Craig. Braun up, heading it. But Tornagi grabs easily. see he's going to be a handful up front for both Nitty and Farmer but Nitty does well there just makes himself nice and big make sure that Braun doesn't get a clean header on goal job done for the center back Lewis goes up with Kiffy can't win that and once again Republic gains the ball Farmer through the back of Thomas Stewart whistled for the foul Sometimes it's those type of fouls at half early in a game. Maybe just a reminder, I'm going to be here today. And uh, not the worst thing. Of course, the way they hand out bookings now, Craig, it's always in danger of going to the book early doors as a center back. And that's not what you want. But I think Farmer, you know, he's given away a free kick there, but it, sometimes that pays off later in the game. Reha, square inside. Already see Tyler Roseland trying to boss his troops. Not happy with the amount of urgency being on pressure being put on the Sacramento back four when they're in possession. Trying to drive them forward a little bit with a little more urgency. You see they're sitting off them quite a bit. Really only engaging at their own at the halfway line. Braun comes looking for it again. Look how deep he has come to get on that ball for number nine. They really do change their positions. Anything to keep in possession. Definitely very easy on the eye. Sandu can't keep that ball in. Seymour with a free pass. Don't want to give up possession when you don't have to. And maybe just a little bit of fatigue at the early pace of this game as WFC2 try and catch their breath, try and settle in a little bit. Yep. They've had a little, a little bit of a break here and they've had an arduous uh, month and a bit on the road. Just looks like they're shaking off a little bit of rust, maybe a bit of 
tiredness and, the, and season fatigue at this stage of the game. And you they haven't given away a goal, and that's the most important thing. They're not chasing from that type of position. I think the longer they can do that, they can give themselves a little bit of time to settle into it, Craig. Forward for Clark. He can't get on the end of it. Barrera switches it to Vukovic. And you also have to believe sometimes when you come back after a long road spell, it's getting comfortable again at home. There's fans here. You think about putting on a, a show. Maybe you just have to get to play and keeping it simple here for WFC2 for the moment. Yeah, growing into the game is probably the first order of business for the Caps right now. You can see there's, like I, we just mentioned, a bit of tiredness and a little bit of rust just with a little bit of a break after the road trip. But more comfort and the more they they're able once they get possession to keep it and keep it with a little bit of intent and a little bit of threat um, the better they'll be off because it just forces sacramento to defend and they'll get tired themselves right now it's a little too easy for sacramento but at the same time without them really creating any guilt edge chances so the caps will be happy from a defensive standpoint they've been very resolute to start the game so far but again sloppy in possession a little bit i think they'll want to tidy that up as quick as possible Braun onside, lays that ball back. Farmer does well to get his leg in. That's excellent, well read by Farmer. Pressure though continues here in the attack for Sacramento Republic FC. Danny Barrera sends a ball over the top, looking for Lopez, Farmer, Shepherds, that ball towards his keeper. Tornagi will push his charges forward to at least try and gain a bit of a territorial advantage. He's looking for Clark, but he can't win the header. Fortunately, it falls for Bustos. Marco Bustos. Lewis from Farmer looks to run at a few players. Bustos gets on the ball again, trying to find Lewis one more time. Clark picks out Rosalind, and this is better stuff for the yeah, home side. Yeah, much better. It all starts with a great ball out from Farmer. He bypasses fullback, makes the defense do another 5, 10 yards of a quick sprint to put the Lewis under pressure. So good, confident ball to the back from Farmer. A lot better in possession on this attack from the Whitecaps. Finding their way, finding their legs here at UBC. The 13th minute, but that is a bad giveaway there by Declan Wind and Sacramento will look to counter. Although they didn't create anything there, Craig, still positive possession from me. I think it's something they can build on. Clementa up from his fullback position, Thompson. Cazares out wide to Kiffy. He looks to send the left foot across in. Nitty up and wins it. Bustos foul there. Again, well defended by Nitty in the air. Nice height and distance on his clearance. I think everything just needs to be another step quicker in this game so far, Craig. From a Caps perspective, we'll definitely want to play with a bit of a little bit more urgency, both in possession. Defensively, they've been solid. Really haven't created much um, Sacramento despite all their possession so far. Roseland gets on the end of it. Nice ball forward for Lewis. Away on the right hand side. Watch there by James Kiffey. Lewis sends it in. But that's grabbed by Sacramento keeper Dominic Jakubic. the Republic continue to knock the ball about Emra Clementa sends it forward Nitty the first one on that Tornagi with Braun chasing after him and Haynes 
couldn't keep that one in. Thompson, watched closely there by Wynn. Vukovic, forward for Kiffy. Lopez, making a run up, sends it in. Farmer, blocks that opportunity. As James Kiffy up from his left back position, looked to have the first Good sight at goal, but good defending there from Jackson Farmer. Yeah, he's nice and big, gets a good block on it, and probably does the wise thing by just keeping it conservative and giving away a corner. But again, Sacramento are more than happy to send both fullbacks and to join up with the attack, and the Caps are going to have to be right on their game defensively if they're going to uh, legislate for that, especially with Tommy Thompson on the right. It's a big battle I'm already seeing develop between him and Declan Wynn. Bit of a stern challenge for the youngster, but it's nice to see um, him up against a, a, a young player with such a potential in Tommy Thompson. You know, he's a U-20 international for the United States. A lot of hope at San Jose for him, and it's a good opportunity for him to come down here to his hometown and play some minutes. But it's a little, little battle developing out here on the left side for the Caps. Sandu. Seymour back to Farmer. Nitty now picks, up, picks out Win. Has to go straight back to Nitty. Sandu to Nitty. Good switch of play there. You know, it's easy to label that one on Nitty as a center back, but when the ball gets switched out three or four times, you have to then draw your attention more upfield and look what the movement's like up front. And I, the first thing I see is Caleb Clark, a little bit static, Busto static, Lewis static. And I think those young lads just have to give a little bit more to get the Caps playing through the lines of Sacramento. Roseland nods it forward to Bustos, who brings it down nicely. Win forward for Clark. Can't bring it down as Daly plays Vukovic. Cazares to Kiffy forward, but picked out nicely there by Seymour. Roseland to Farmer. Nitty watched by Braun. Thompson steals possession. Lopez lays it back to Burrell. Caleb Clark does a good job tracking back there to win possession for Vancouver. Andre Lewis now, though, gives it straight away. Sloppy play in the middle of the park, but WFC2 once again with possession. Haynes forward for Lewis. Lewis at the top of the 18. Can't latch on to that. But some good positive movement forward there. Yeah, it, and it was good awareness from Lewis. To, he saw a gap in the back four. Instead of staying wide, he's cut in, put him in a bit of a difficult spot. Nice little delivery, a little bit unlucky, that he couldn't get his foot on the end of it. Thompson can't wrap his leg quite all the way around that. That sails high on the cross from Emra Clementa. The right back, and you mentioned from Sacramento's point of view, their fullback's very active here. Oh, and the, the wide players, more or less, Tommy Thompson plays very narrow. I mean, he was on the end of that cross from the right from the right hand side. So he's more than happy to pull himself right off the touch line, get into those areas where he's linking up well with both Stewart and Braun. And in the end, he gets, you know, he'll be disappointed with that one. I mean, it's a it's it's on his preferred right foot. He's just got to guide it and keep it down, keep control the, the ball, because all the weight's in the cross. And as you know, Craig, if you just snatch your foot at it, it's often when it skies over the net. But a little bit of a let off for the Caps there. Stewart 
can't bring that cross down from Kiffy. Tornaghi plays quickly to Haynes. Slips it back to Wynn, who gets it back from Bustos. Seymour to Marco Bustos, racing through the middle. Referee Marquez blows the foul there. A little bit of urgency now from Vancouver. You can see every time Tyler Roseland tries to get on the ball like a good captain, he knows the speed of play has been a little bit off it for the Caps thus far. Anytime time the ball is down, he gets it down. He's looking to get a play. And Trent, the message there is let's get it going a little bit quicker. Probably gotten away with being nil-nil at this stage, Craig. There's been a couple chances that are starting to present themselves for Sacramento. But the quicker the Caps move it, we've seen it over and over this summer. The more urgent they play in their, in their attack, the, the better rewards they've gotten. The, one thing they haven't lacked at home is goals. Very successful especially running at players from the outside when they get their opportunity and punishing teams quickly. And again, WFC2 coming off a very extended long road trip, no doubt getting used to the comfy confines of UBC one more time. Ball brought down well there by Haynes. Wonderful cross field ball by uh, Farmer as well. Just again, a different look. The nice thing about a big crossfield ball like that is, again, for a zonal marking defense, which is pretty much every team these days, they all have to shift with a bit of more urgency. You're making the, defending, the defense work. Haynes to Clark. Caleb Clark slips it towards Bustos. He can't get on the end of it. And Thompson now away. His ball forward for Stewart. Goes out, throw in for the Caps. Lewis forward for Caleb Clark. Michael Daly will just let that run out as Clark can't get on the end of it. Follow the USL on Twitter to become a league insider. Join Club Conversation and have your chance at exclusive giveaways. The USL on Twitter. Also, if you're a fan of the league, why not join the Facebook page? USL on Facebook gives you exclusive league news and interactive content. Two good ways to stay connected with the USL. Nil-nil your score here at UBC. Sacramento Republic FC, Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2. Public continue to be patient, knock the ball around. Lopez sends it forward. Braun wins that. Kiffy up from his left back position. One more time, tries to step inside. Then goes to Justin Braun. Sandu trying to keep tabs on Kiffy. Does a good job to spin away from him. Send the cross in. Tornaghi out though to grab it. He sends forward quickly, looking for Bustos, who gets a touch on it. And fortunate bounce back to Jordan Haynes. Bustos done ever so well there. And a great little seeing eyeglass ball, but caught offside, Craig. And I think even in their attack there, it's really interesting with Sacramento, do they send both their fullbacks, both the wide players come narrow, linking in almost like four strikers. Very difficult to defend against. And what they do is they say, Barrera and Lopez, you guys are so good in possession, so good on the ball. You guys just sit almost like a box in front of your uh, your two center backs. And I'll let you guys get on it because we'll stretch. We're, we're good enough in possession that we don't have to be cautious. And uh, certainly it's paid off for them so far. I think they'll, from a Sacramento uh, Republic uh, perspective, they'll be a little disappointed with how razor sharp they've been in the final third because, boy, they've gotten into some great areas. Roseland now, forward, Bustos, 
falls for Clark. He can't put it in. Marco Bustos with the best chance here this afternoon so far for either side. But it's still nil-nil. And it comes from good urgent work from the captain again, Tyler Rosalind. If there's one player you can't levy any rust on, it's the skipper so far. He's been a good example to his young teammates, trying to drive him forward with a bit more urgency. And they get into a great area, and with the form that Busto's been in, you'd expect him to uh, slot that one. But he does everything right. It's a nice goal, nice save. He keeps it low. So maybe just a little bit more angle towards one of the corners. Big save there by Dominic Jakubic. Keeping it at nil-nil. Caleb Clark coming over to get the ball. Has win on the outside supporting him, but goes back to Haynes. Haynes back to Caleb Clark, turns in to Daly, who wins that challenge. And now Barrera picks out Lopez. Braun moving forward with Stewart up top. Justin Braun can't get by Nitty as you see the good movement from the two front runners crisscrossing. It's actually very clever defending by Farmer. He recognizes that uh, he's getting dragged out of that space, doesn't fall for it. In the end, just gets enough of a touch on it to have it run through to Tornagi. The game seems to have the little injection of life is with that chance for Bustos is definitely uh, giving the game something. And you hope that continues uh, for the rest of the first half, Craig. Again, here you go, Tyler Roseland winning the ball back in such a high position. And it's a wonderfully weighted pass to Bustos. Young man does everything right. Very nice first touch. He gets a nice strike on goal, but the goalkeeper's there. He closes his space down ever so well. Good attack there from Declan Wynn, the left back. Is WFC2 coming to life here a little bit more? Getting some more confidence, pushing the pace, pushing up the park. Now the Republic will look to counter that. Kiffy up from his left back position, steps inside, looks to cut it back to Stewart. Farmer hooks it away. And that's out for a throw in. We want to tell you the WFC Tour back at Thunderbird Stadium next Sunday, September 13th against Orange County Blues FC tickets. Only $15 live music. Food trucks, family activities, and good vibes. All here at T-Bird Stadium, WFC2. Next weekend, September 13th. Slowly but surely, Alan Koch's side is gaining more confidence as things go here. Playing against a very organized Sacramento group. And you'd have to say that an experience of playing these type of players who have some games under their belt, a side like Sacramento that speaks volumes and does a lot for the WFC2 younger players. Well, we've said it over and over again, Craig, to be in a true, as a true reserve environment, first and foremost, the development of your young players. And uh, that's a big philosophy that they've stuck to. Of course, they'll put out the team in a similar fashion to how the MLS team plays, almost identical in fact. So. If, the philosophy doesn't just go from player to player, it is from squad to squad and formation to formation right through to the youth ranks. And you've seen the growth. I mean, you've seen in the first team with Tim Parker growing as well as he has this year, Christian Dean, and now Bustos and Froze are get the young men are getting lots of opportunities to hone their craft. Stewart lays his back, Thompson gets it. Braun in the back of the net, Justin Braun, just like that. And it's 1-0 Sacramento Republic FC. Good possession there by the visitors. Knocked it around and Justin Braun finishes it off. Well, if there's one criticism you could have given Sacramento early in this game was how sharp they were in these type of areas, but not this time. And Braun, the way he sets himself onto his right foot there and the way he takes his goal is ever so good. No chance really for Ternagi. He's buried it. But again, it... <laughs> It was coming to a certain degree, but just when the Caps were showing signs of life themselves from an attacking standpoint, a bit of a sucker punch from Sacramento. 
again, nice possession of the final third. It's been fantastic from a Sacramento perspective, but that was their one moment and they took advantage of it. They've certainly worked into great areas frequently in the first 30 minutes. But in that, st that's in that case, he just put himself in such a wonderful position, Braun, with his first touch and his second touch, he buried it. Can WFC2 find a way to answer here? Just under 15 minutes to go in the first half. And I think to the movement, just not in straight lines, there's that constant crisscrossing, diagonal movement that is really difficult to track players, especially when it gets a little frantic around your 18. Yeah, their movement off the ball is superb. And I, again, you see how high up the pitch they're sending their fullbacks, allowing Lopez and Barrera to do really to pull all the strings out of the back four. You see how deep they both come to get on the ball off their two center backs. The problem is now playing in a 4-2-3-1 is you see Tyler trying to boss his teammates because he's getting pulled out of his holding position to defend higher up the pitch. Once they bypass Tyler Roseland, real difficult decisions for the Whitecaps back four to make at that stage. Especially as you said, with the outside players cutting in and the fullbacks pushing high, there's numerous options up front. They come into areas like Tommy Thompson right now on the ball. That asks a real question of the left back. Do I go? Do I pass him on to one of my holding midfielders? And in the end, he's been going and leaving an enormous gap to expose. What happens? Jordan Haynes now has to do 80 yards to, of defending back, and he's one of your attacking players. It becomes more difficult, and it becomes a bit of a domino effect for the Caps to get attacking forward themselves. Thompson. Can't get it by win. And fair play to Haynes. I mean, he's, he hasn't shirked his defensive responsibility. In fact, he's done a ton of defending early on. I think Caps will be wanting him to get on the ball more. They just haven't been able to get much possession out of themselves so far. Clementa, the left back. To Braun, the goal scorer. Lopez looks to have a go. Barrera out to James Kiffy. Kiffy whips it off. Quick. Hard ball, dealt very well with though by Tornagi who punches it away. Fantastic goalkeeping, gets a nice solid punch on that. Bypasses all attacking players, gets into an area to def that the defenders can clear it. But again, how easily does Sacramento get into these crossing areas? And this time he delivers a nicely weighted whipped ball into that area and Tornagi again, he de deals with it very well. Really are, to use an English expression, turning the screw a little bit here, Sacramento, and the Caps will want to be wary of that. Crucial from a Caps perspective, they get to half at least at the same score, if not better. Against, against a team that keeps the ball as well as Sacramento, trying to chase a game can be a bit of folly. Difficult task for sure. And uh, the Caps have created their own opportunities, you know, Craig, so I think they have that positive to draw upon. They've had very little possession, but boy, when they've gotten it, they've created a couple guilt edge chances themselves. So there's some positive to look on for the Cats' perspective. Marco Bustos with by far the best one. His drive stopped, but WFC2 doing a better job right at the moment, keeping the ball. Clark can't retain possession, and that's out for a corner kick. Mm -hmm. You see there's a lot of patience in their possession there from the Cavs perspective, but I think what they'll want to add is speed of their possession, just a little quicker, because that, with a bit of slow possession, it's nice, it gives them a break, but it really does very little to undo the opposition's defense, which is very well organized. It's a good side. A bit surprised by their league standing, actually, Craig, from what I'm seeing here today. Haynes plays to Lewis. Very good defending. And now Stewart racing up the park. Thompson on the outside of him, and that's where the ball goes. And Diego Lopez was the one who won that challenge with Lewis, and he's slowly coming up the park, grabbing at his right leg. You wonder if he stretched a groin or pulled something a little bit there. It's Braun. Plays it back to Barrera. Thompson. Clementa. And there's Lopez. 
flag up for offside. Justin Braun slipped in behind Nitty. What a beautifully delivered ball. Just so much whip on that. And the way Braun's put started this game, he is a serious handful. He comes deep, he pulls off the shoulders of defenders. And in that situation, he pulled right off the shoulder of Farmer. And if he, if he just managed to delay his run by just half a second, he probably finds himself with a free header on goal. A little bit of another let off by the Caps. It's good they got a, the linesman's flag went up, but Sacramento is starting to get a little sharper in those final third areas. Thompson. Fantastic tackle. Nitty wins that ball, and Bustos goes back the other way. Clementa wins it for the Republic. Barrera to Kiffy. Lewis back to watch him. Braun making a run forward. He can't get there, and Sandu watches that go out. And this is a strong challenge once again from Craig Nitty. Yeah, and uh, I think again, so many, so many times those type of things are given as fouls for that wonderful word as a center back, center back intent, which I, I drives me crazy. <laughs> the intent there is to go win the ball. He doesn't show any studs. He comes in from the side. And it's just a nice, strong tackle. And uh, that's part of the game as well. It's an entertaining part of the game, if done right. If there's some maliciousness, players are two-footing each other, obviously that, that's something you want to stamp out of the game. But a nice tackle executed by Nitty there is, a, I think, is a nice part of the game. Oh, great crossfield ball by Nitty. Lewis brings it down nicely, looking for Clark. He can't get on the end of it. Roseland. Up sniffing around, looking for a loose ball, but can't get it. And that's just hooked away up the park towards Braun, who collides with Farmer, clasping at his face. Seymour to Rosalind. Stumbles just a little bit there and gets fortunate that referee Marquez blows the foul on Cazares. It's a great that attack from the cap starts with a wonderful crossfield ball by Craig Nitty. But you can see that the amount of work that Jordan Haynes is having to do to defend is starting to not allow him to get into those seal the back post attacking areas. Once they get there, you're hoping the caps can release one or two more players into those attacking areas. The young man does excellent there to draw a free kick though. Michael Daly whistled for the foul there on the aforementioned Jordan Haynes and a yellow card by referee Marquez and more importantly a very good opportunity for WFC2 from a dangerous spot. Well you see it's funny Jordan Haynes has taken a passage out of uh, Tommy Thompson's book. He's come drifted a little bit off the wing try and get into a narrow, more narrow area and in the end he asks a question of the center backs what do I do? Do I stay or do I go? In the end they go commit a foul and put the Caps in a situation late in the first half where they can probably get back into this game. But again the Caps, when they do finally get into these final third areas, which has been a bit few and far between, they're going to want to just release that one extra player to get into a scoring area, a la what Bustos did a little bit earlier. It's just break your neck a little bit to put yourself into a dangerous area. And uh, if you're doing your whole half defending, it can really discourage you from an attacking player's perspective. You certainly see how tired Jordan was there, tracking back a moment earlier. In the end, though, from an attacking standpoint, draws a free kick. Dominic Jakubic making sure the wall's set up with Bustos and Nitty. Yeah, we've seen this from Nitty before. Does love a set piece. He hasn't had the success so far this season with it, but we'll see here. Leaves it for Bustos, Ooh. and that's off the wall and out for a corner kick. Yeah. Unlucky if he just, it's, it's, it's one of those, it's a perfect distance because it's not right on the edge of the 18 where he has to come up and down so quickly. But, uh, you know, it's well disguised free kick. If it's just a yard higher, he's probably asking questions of the goalkeeper, but the wall does its job. But again, it's another opportunity for the Caps on a set piece here. Busto sends that in. Punch clear and the foul whistled there by referee Marquez on Jakubic.
If you visited the new USLsoccer.com, get the latest news, live stats, and check out the new social media hub. That's USLsoccer.com. Nike, proud partner of the USL. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike soccer information. Just about five minutes to go here in the first half as the visiting Sacramento Republic FC lead WFC 2 1-0 on a goal from Justin Braun. But the home side has had a few more opportunities of late. And slowly coming into this game more and more. Thompson on the ball, watched there by Bustos. Clementa can't keep it in and good defending there as the players collapse around the very talented Tommy Thompson. Yeah, Bustos does a good uh, good job of recognizing when to lend a hand. His cover from a defensive standpoint surprised them a little bit there, Sacramento, and in the end, giveaway possession, which we haven't seen a lot of from Sacramento. Very comfortable side in, in possession. You can see why they send both fullbacks so high, and their movement um, in interchanging positions is very good, very good. And that'll be something that Koch will have to come to grips with as the manager here, how they're going to rally against that you know it's, it's a few positives is from with very few attacks the caps have really created a few guilt edge chances themselves i think that's something they can draw upon but boy if they can create a few more with a little more urgency in their possession greg i think they'll get something a slow start for vancouver whitecaps here at UBC, but a promising end to the second half as they push forward and look for an equalizer. Alan Koch's side appearing much more comfortable and confident as things have gone on against a very experienced Sacramento Republic FC. Win to Farmer. Lewis on it. Decides to go back to Sandu. To Seymour. Spins away nicely to Farmer, who continues to keep the ball on the right-hand side of the park. Switch of play looked to be on, but it stays there and a little bit of trouble for WFC2. That probably a wiser. And you, know, you see Jordan Farmer is still trying to get him going a little quicker. If he can switch out the other side and make, again, ask Sacramento just to do another 30, 40 yards of shift and cover. But it's nice to see the Caps showing a little bit more quickness in their possession. And uh, if they can build upon that towards the end of this half, it's something they can use as a starting point for the second. Farmers ball forward for Lewis, doesn't find him. James Kiffey does play it forward. Michael Daly. Emra Clementa back to Daly. WFC2 a little bit more difficult to break down now as Farmer calling the foul of Braun. Maybe getting a little more used to what they've seen in front of them here. Yeah. And uh, with Braun dropping deep, and now uh, here we go with Kiffy getting forward and joining the attack again. Very difficult to defend against, for sure. And Clementa is high and in line with the number nine now from a right back perspective. They really do send bodies forward. Lopez, clever back heel to Kiffy, and that's out for a goal kick. We even see there at the end of that, it hasn't resulted in anything, but there's five. Maroon tops in the 18-yard box, and uh, Maroon Five is that what you're saying? I the, think that, that was what I was alluding it's to. A, yeah. It's a band, isn't it? <laughs> you might want to trademark that. Lewis on the ball with a minute left to go here. At UBC plus some stoppage time. Oh. Haynes getting forward just can't corral it with Jakubic coming out and getting it 
It's another great crossfield ball by uh, Farmer. And, uh, you know, the Caps opportunities have come from those kind of crossfield balls. A little bit, you know, a little bit big and ugly. But I tell you what, it's really, if asked the Republic players to defend with a little bit more speed and urgency, I tell you what, once they, if you're just hoping he takes a better touch in those areas, then he's in on goal. But again, another positive drop on. There are openings in the Republic back four. Daly, Barrera. Sends it forward to Stewart, who's on side. Clementa. Once again, up from that right back position, supporting. Stewart gets it back from him one more time and nowhere to go, so he'll retreat, play in Barrera. Vukovic. Lopez. As we've hit the 45 minute mark, Clementa races forward, gets on the end of that. Looks to whip a cross in. Maybe a bit of a miss hit, but... <laughs> yeah, he holds his hand up to that. Dangerously close to that near post. What happens when you play against a team that possesses the ball as well as Sacramento is everybody starts to come narrow. And good, if, a la the famous Barcelona sides of, of a few years ago, that's when they'll spring a nice cross field ball. And that was an example of that. It was a wonderfully pay, played attack by Sacramento. It results in a bit of a miss hit. Lots of work to do for the Caps looking to the second half. And, and I think lots to build on, too, yeah. when you look at it, because you, you think about the start in the first 10 minutes, it was a, a little rocky, to say the least. But again, coming off a long road trip, getting used to your surroundings, maybe thinking, oh, we got to put a show on at home. They've settled in nicely here, haven't they? And, and as we said, they've created a, a, a few very good opportunities. They certainly have. And I think it's that's a big positive for the Caps first half. You know, they certainly not won the possession battle. But against a team like Sacramento, I don't think there are many teams in the USL that would. They're very good on, on the ball. But from a cap standpoint, when, they're, when they've gotten forward into those attacking areas, they've, they very were unfortunate to go 1-0 in front with Bustos' opportunity. I think there's positives to draw upon. I think the big positive is that they didn't quit on one another. Um, very easy when you're getting the run around a little bit in possession to abandon the plan and start thinking about just yourself in a defensive. They stuck together, they stuck to their guns, and they didn't let that one nil lead become three. And I think that's a sign of maturity from a young side, is to get to halftime, you know, yep, we're losing right now, let's get into the dressing room, one nil down, let our manager see what he's identified, and we'll see if we can do some troubleshooting and fix some problems. One nil, your score after 45 minutes of play here at UBC. We'll be back after a short halftime break with the second half of action. Lots more soccer to come from the Point Grey campus as the Sacramento Republic FC lead Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2-1-0 here at the end of the first half.
It's just a great day on a serious note for the kids to come out, to be around some role models, get some teachings in life, and um, the ultimate goal of Hope and Health with, in partnership with Vancouver Whitecap is to change this intergenerational cycle of uh, marginalization and uh, one kid at a time through the beautiful game. to over 400 kids here today and it's not just about numbers we have over 25 First Nations communities coming together it's about building relationships it's giving these kids life skills on and off the pitch it's very important for me to hang out with them and see what they are thinking know about their lives so it's a nice a very nice experience Everyone has their own struggles and they learn from the players and the adults here to have the courage to face their fears and to achieve their dreams no matter what that might be, whether it's sports or it's something else. I was doing a little arts and craft over there. I was helping a kid make a mask and then a little girl helped me draw this right here. Love. Peace and love. This is such a heartwarming event. Hope and Health and what's going on with Hope and Health is actually very hopeful. And uh, I love coming out here to see all these young Native kids because there's a fire in their eyes for sure. My day was good. Oh, and I'm amazing. <laughs> and I'm having lots of fun because I love soccer. What's most important to us here today is that each and every one of these kids feel special and cared for and that they know that we believe in them so they can believe in themselves. And that's really what Hope and Health is all about. Scoring and geeking everyone out. So be on your team or the other team? Our team. Your team? All right, I'm going to be on green team. He's tall. That's it? He's tall. I'm cool. And he's cool. Who are we? Who are we? This is awesome, man. I cannot complain. You know, every time you get a chance to spend time with the kids, you just gotta be happy. Especially now, when I'm a father myself, seeing kids happy is the greatest joy ever. Well, it's a fun event because I get to spend time with my KL family, and it's just fun kicking the soccer ball around. This is Mauro Rosales, and uh, you're gonna see today Mauro Rosales on set. Enjoy it. I like it to share what I accomplished in my career, how hard you have to work to to have your dreams come true, and hope you like it. You're gonna see it soon. It is important because I have hair, and I have teammates without hair. I have younger ones that they have less hair than me. So I have to enjoy it now. It's gonna felt in, I don't know, soon, probably. <laughs> I like it uh, to be positive for myself and also being positive for the people that around me and people that I really care. That's a wrap, enjoy the match. See you guys.
Pedro, another season ticket. Yes? Come on. Welcome back to UBC, where your score after 45 minutes of play is Sacramento Republic FC 1, Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2, Craig McEwen and Mark Rogers in the broadcast booth. And on the whole, as we talked about going into the break, uh, Sacramento very organized. They get forward. They've created a few chances. They've scored a goal. But from a Vancouver point of view, they've kind of worked their way into this match a little bit have they settled down just a little bit i thought so and they created a few good chances that they'll be happy with they're going to have to take into account the movement of sacramento especially in the final thirds very good and uh it's a great learning uh, game for these young caps players these are the type of games that i think they get such a great benefit for for having a usl franchise and uh it's these type of games where they're playing against a team that's playing football playing football properly Sending both fullbacks, linking up, sending wide players into more narrow positions. Things that a young white cap player probably wouldn't see in a game to game basis. And it really does help them in their learning process. And let's also not forget the experience that Sacramento brings to the table of being a defending league champion with a victory here. This afternoon, they will clinch a playoff burst. So lots for them to play for. And you've seen it in how they've approached this match. And uh, tough test for Vancouver here as we're underway in the second half. But the Caps have had a few good opportunities. Marco Bustos, a very good one in the first half. And they'll need to create more of that and, and get on those balls and push forward when they can. And as you said, push the pace. Yeah, I think you'll see some sort of adjustment 
Now, there's lots of ways to skin that cat, uh, how you defend against a team with their movement. Uh, I've always felt that the best way is just to stick to your plan, stick to a nice, rigid uh, shape that, and ask them to break you down as a group. But from an attacking standpoint, from the Caps' perspective, what they'll want to do is just to show a little bit more speed in, in their possession, a little bit more cavalier approach to getting through their lines. And that really does go through the feet of a young player like Bustos, because once he gets the ball and gets facing their defense, he really can unlock doors. He's a good player. So I think from a Caps' perspective, they'll want to just show a little bit more early, a little bit more often, like Caleb Clark just did there and get into those advanced positions and get bodies into those advanced positions so that when they're crossing the ball, Craig, it's not just one player attacking the cross. Because if we've seen anything here as Lopez gets on the ball for Sacramento is that the Republic are a little bit vulnerable at the back. Yeah, because they send so many bodies forward that they're susceptible themselves, especially to the counterattack. And if the Caps can get playing forward quickly, once they transition, and uh, by the way, that is the MO of this franchise, has been a massive reason for the MLS side's success, then I think they'll create their own chances this half. Bustos gives chase there. Kiffy gives it away. Seymour plays it to Sandu, sends it forward. Bustos gets the knockdown. Looking for some support, and he finds it in Nitty. Win, push forward. Didn't like what he sees, so they go all the way back. That switch of play to Farmer. Sandu now. Close quickly there by Lopez. Farmer sends it up towards Clark. He can't get on the end of it. Daly did get the header. Just hoofed forward by Sacramento. Lopez. Stewart. Braun making a run across the face of goal. Sandu gets in the way of that. It's out for the first corner kick of the second half. Good recovery run by Sandu, but once they force Sacramento to play sort of scrappy like that, it's crucial that the Caps get on those second balls and get themselves back in possession. You see Sandu, it's a nice recovery run and gets into a good position to block the cross. Lopez sends in the cross on the second phase as the Republic played short. Lewis trying to get on the end of that, can't do so. And the visitors retain possession in the Whitecaps half of the park. Nitty up to challenge for that header. Does not win it with Stewart, but it does go to Tornagi, who will gather and play from the back. Gives it to Seymour, who switches it to Declan Wynn. Wynn coming forward. Checks up and spies Roseland, the captain. It goes back to Nitty. Farmer. Bustos coming to show. Ball through over the top looking for Roseland. He can't get on the end of it. Stewart now in a foot race with Nitty. Nitty goes to ground, wins it, but it goes straight to Braun. The goal scorer, Justin Braun, switches play. Farmer does well to step in front of that. Barrera to Lopez. Back to Barrera. Clementa back to Lopez. Good ball over the top to the right back, racing forward. Stewart gets it back to Thompson. That awkwardly hits Nitty on the inside of the knee and he goes to ground. And I wasn't sure if it was the ball or the plant or a little bit of both, but it doesn't look good. Tough it, to tell from that angle, isn't it, Craig? He might have been clipped in the nitties, we don't know. <laughs> As he gets up, yeah. the nether region is big center half. Get on with it. He will. What a nice passage of possession by Republic. I thought it was good. The Caps showed signs. They've really lifted the speed of their play. And they're asking now Sacramento to match it if they can. They have. But I think the Caps will be happy with how they've started this second half. 
Bustos a little busier. Trying to find his way to get his foot on the ball a little bit more here in the second half. As we've seen him play some great games here at UBC so far this season. As the young Canadian continues to grow and mature as a soccer player, Farmer sends it forward to Clark. Caleb Clark gets it back. Good run up there. Lewis can't get on the end of that cross. But Bustos does to Sandu. Kiffy now. Sends it up. Farmer nods it away with Braun challenging. Oh, we certainly asked the Caps if they're going to get anything out of this game is to up the speed of their play. And they certainly have done that. You can tell that was the message at halftime. A lot more urgency in their possession. Looking again to better areas. They're starting to dominate a little bit of possession here themselves. And then force Sacramento into playing long, hopeful balls. It's crucial in that when that happens that they retain possession quickly. Lewis goes down. Very good ball by Farmer again. Just to, those are the type of balls that make defenders work. James Kiffey with the foul and the yellow card. Perfectly weighted ball, allows a player like Lewis with pace to run onto it, get in behind of their back four. Again, they're getting into the, these are the type of areas though, they want to punish Sacramento. Only had three or four set pieces so far this half, or this game. Once again, it's the Nitty Busto combination standing over the ball. Bustos took the last free kick in the first half and clipped the top of the wall, went out for a corner kick. We'll see who has a go here. But you think he'd have to favor the left footer of Bustos, and that's where it goes. He drives it straight into the wall that time, and Nitty goes back to recover. Nitty forward. Republic now will look to counter. Stewart in a foot race with Nitty. Nitty does well to win that. Good defending by Nitty there. He's one on one. If anything, you can ex you'd expect a center back one on one exposed with the forward in those big areas to be second best. But Nitty's nice and strong on the ball. Good composure to win the ball back, not just cleared into the stands as well. Much stronger start to this half for the home side. WFC2 looking a lot more comfortable. And it looks like Sacramento might be suggesting they have a change. And Vancouver also going to the bench here early days in the second half. The Republic up 1-0 here at UBC. Looks like Blasco is going to come on either for Lewis or for Haynes. Haynes put a big sh defensive shift in the first half. <laughs> well, there's another player that we've seen have some success at Thunderbird Stadium this season, Victor Blasco. Loves to go forward, loves to run at players, and really causes a lot of problems with that style of play. He was red hot in the months of June and July, Craig. Hope the Caps will be hoping that he, that translates to September. Farmer stepping forward. Sandu. Lewis foul there. As referee Marquez will now call for the substitutions as both sides will be looking to make a change. And for Vancouver, Blasco will be going in for Jordan Haynes. That's to be expected, that change. I think that's a wise change by Alan Koch. He had the, uh, let the young residency product have a good run out today, but 
did most of his work in a defensive capacity. And of course, when you're in a more advanced attacking role, you'll want more attacking production. But I felt he started the second half very well, the young man. And there's a reason for the Caps getting, definitely getting back in this game from a possession standpoint. Thomas Stewart out for Sacramento. Mark Sherrod in for the Republic. Farmer goes up to try and win that. As the challenge is won by the recent substitution for Sacramento. Lopez called on the handball there. Good thing because it was a three on two the other way. Yeah. You'd be most susceptible on the counterattack off your own set pieces. Showed there. Bustos back to Sandu. Watched there by Braun. Tell you the Caps' willingness to show early and often compared to their first half is night and day. The reason why they're getting to these attacking areas and playing through lines is their attacking players, a la Boot. Uh, Bustos, who's on the ball right now, is just showing that extra yard early to provide that forward pass for the midfielders. It just allows the whole team to get up, get a little bit of confidence, and then create opportunities of, their self, of themselves. And I would suggest to you, it, it also puts Sacramento off a little bit and have a lot more to worry about when guys are doing that as opposed to just sitting back in their defensive shell. And the thing is, then, once if you can release bodies forward because of that, you have bodies when you do lose the ball that are in an area to defend right away. And uh, we've seen over and over again where they've had success, the Caps off in the summer, is that high press where they've released bodies in attack. They've won the ball up high, high up the pitch. Now it's a little bit of a stern test against Sacramento because of their comfort and possession. They seem to have been, the players like Barrera and Lopez, they can play through that kind of pressure. And again, that's what goes back to what we said at halftime. It's a very good game for these young players to learn something from. Foul there on Caleb Clark. As Lopez plays it to Barrera. Now wide to Kiffy. Sacramento fullbacks have not got up the park quite as much here in the second half. Lopez sends a cross in. Thompson will get on the end of that. Steps on the ball, regains possession and his balance. Spins away, Clementa to Barrera. Back to Clementa. It's just as we said, the fullbacks haven't been getting forward. They do. Dangerous ball in front of goal, but no real support there as Sandu wins it for Vancouver. Lewis stepping on the inside. Good composure by Sandu, too. He's done a lot of defending so far in this game, and some tired, tired minds would, have, would encourage a player there just to hook it away, but he doesn't. Takes a nice first touch, nice and patient. And in the end, Caps have now worked into their, the opponent's half with some good patient possession. Lots of signs of positivity this half. Second half substitution, Victor Blasco there fouled. Well, one thing he loves to do is he likes to start wide, Victor Blasco, and then cut in. And uh, he can get down to the byline, but he also loves to cut into those areas now where one of the center backs has to relief, release. He's gotten assists and goals from that type of position numerous times here at Thunderbird. Nice to see a number of first team players here in the audience as Kendall Waston has just arrived with his family in tow, enjoying the Labor Day sunshine. It and certainly also, seems to be a theme, doesn't it, Craig? It's a great sign of the togetherness in this club right now and in the squad. I don't think we've ever looked down from our position and seen a barren squad of first team players. They're always out to support the uh, younger players, and that's great. Vukovic forward. Gerard. Back to Kiffy. Steps inside. Challenge there by Seymour. Plays in Lopez. Thompson. Back to Barrera. He goes forward. Lopez looks to slip it through to 
Thompson, who had been making the run forward. Kiffy wins possession. A little bit more determination now by Sacramento. Sandu knocked to ground. Fouled there. More smart defending and patience there by Sahil Sandu. Yeah, again, he, it was a bit of a more difficult one than it looked just because of the run that Sheridan made in behind. It was definitely into his blind spot. He wouldn't have known he was there, but he still showed uh, enough composure to bring it down and then seal him off and draw the foul. Another good bit of defending by Sahil Sandu. Farmer all the way back to Tornagi. Nitty. Sends one forward to Blasco. Blasco can't get on the end of that. As Daly had stepped in there. Sandu goes up to challenge on Lopez. That's out for a Sacramento throw in. Braun. Straight back to Daly. Caleb Clark looking to force him one way or the other, and Barrera spins away after getting the ball. Quickly, the Republic pushing forward. Gerard, watch there by Farmer. Back to Kiffy. Kiffy. Dances down, tries to get that ball across. And Jackson Farmer does a very good job there of winning the goal kick for WFC2 and not leaving his feet. Absolutely, very good defending. I thought the way he reacted and recovered his run to put Sherrod off from a shooting position, he, forcing the player to come back, cut back onto his right foot, allowed white cap players to get back into a defensive position in the end. A little bit fortunate to get the goal kick, but fortune favors the brave often, and uh, I felt another little bit of good defending by Farmer. Blasco. WFC2 gives up possession, and Sacramento pushes forward one more time. Lopez to Barrera. Vukovic forward. Barrera loses possession, but referee Marquez deems that he was fouled at midfield. It looks like Mr. Will Seymour goes in the book. The yellow card possibly had a word there. Yeah, that's for dissent. And I feel the referee's done a a very good job today, Craig. I probably disagree with this decision. I just think he's gone in and won the ball. Um, I don't think there's any contact or anything malicious. But at the same time, the refs had a really good day. You can't really point at anything and think he's made a poor decision. At that In that situation, I think Seymour showed his age. I think he just has to back off, get on with it. There's been a lot of positives from the Caps' perspective so far this half, and I think that what they'll want to do is just get on with it. He send it. You don't want to get a card for dissent in this type of situation. Victor Blasco stepping inside. Cuts it all the way towards Ooh. Lewis. It's that little bit of quality that you I love about this kid, Blasco. Because He's creative, he's unpredictable. He tries to do things to unlock teams. And uh, I think it's a rarity in a lot of Canadian players. I know obviously he's of Spanish descent, but I think some of the young, our young Canadian players can learn from that. This is even there, a little bit of quality and imagination. He, he's a yard away from opening up the Sacramento defense with a wonderfully released ball. Opening things up again, Marco Bustos around the keeper, Marco Bustos finishes it off and on cue, Victor Blasco does finally find a way to unlock Sacramento, setting up Marco Bustos, it's 1-1. Well, rewind one minute and repeat. 
There's the creativity we just alluded to. And uh, it's a wonderfully disguised reverse ball for Bustos. Great run by the young man. And his first touch is perfect. Takes him past the goalkeeper perfectly, but not so far that the, the opportunity is uh, gone amiss. Perfectly weighted pass by Blasco. Wonderfully executed finish by Bustos. 1-1. One, one. And deserved. Good second half by the Caps so, so far. Caleb Clark comes out. Mackenzie Pridham goes in up top. And in the 66th minute, WFC2 have drawn even here at UBC. A very solid start to the second half for the Caps. Ternagi <laughs> fumbling and bumbling his way there. Wasn't pretty, but gets the job done. And Victor Blasco on the ball one more time. What's the nicest way we could, I think unorthodox would be the nicest word we could come up for that. But this has all come from a willingness to put an extra sh shift in the second half. And from an attacking standpoint, the Caps, it's been night and day. Um, you want to look at how to make an impact in the game. Blasco's done it a number of times this season when he's come off the bench. And again, he hasn't let his side down. He's come off the bench and he's given them an enormous lift. I tell you what, the minute he gets over half here, he get, wants to open onto his right foot and then gives the whole defense the eyes and plays a beautiful reverse ball in behind the center backs. That's top drawer. Excellently executed attack by Blasco and Bustos. And uh, gets the caps back in it. You can see just the, their body language now, Craig, is gives, giving them an, a massive lift. Chasing shadows a little bit the first half. But boy, you got to give some credit to Alan Koch and his staff. Whatever they said to them at halftime, it's definitely made a difference. They've, from an attacking standpoint, I could say they've definitely edged the attack so far this half. And it was lopsided in the first half, in the Republic's favor. Marco Bustos on the ball, the goal scorer here. His seventh of the season. Bustos sends it forward to Roseland. Plays in Lewis. Pridham up to try and win that. And Blasco called there for the foul. And the interesting thing about what Blasco is having to do now, all of a sudden now Thompson is having to defend and come back and not just run at players going forward. Right. And it's, it really is as simple as that, Craig. Force that attacking player to defend, something he doesn't want to do. And get on the front foot yourselves. And Blasco is imposing himself on Thompson. Now, it's nice to have those fresh legs. Jordan Haynes, he, he really did work selflessly for his teammates defensively the first half, but really didn't get much opportunity to get forward himself. But Blasco now is really giving, you know, from an already lifted side, he's given them that extra boost as a sub, and that's exactly what you want as a staff. They'll be looking at what Blasco's given them, and they'll be thrilled. He's a big reason for them being back in this game. And it was his dummy about 40 yards out from goal that started that run for the Bustos play where he sold Thompson going that way and then Thompson had to chase all the way back. Victor Blasco as mentioned putting his stamp here on things in the second half of play as he looked to take off again and throws his arms up and now will go looking for the ball from Wynn who plays back to Nitty. Another substitution coming from Sacramento here. As we move into the final 20 minutes of action in this USL clash between Sacramento Republic FC and Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. Lopez to Thompson. Now Blasco will have to do a little bit of defending. Uh, he bowls over Tommy Thompson. Uh, we've seen what he offers from an attacking standpoint and uh, see what he offers from a defensive standpoint at times. The minute he gets a shoulder across from Thompson, that's where Blasco just has to be honest and allow him, allow him to continue to dribble, but see if he can then get himself his shoulder across him. He doesn't in the in the end. He gets a little too eager to go win the ball back. An obvious foul.
Blasco tries to hook it away. Can't. Vukovic sends it forward. It's cut out though nicely there by Wynn, but then one. Clementa to Braun at the near post, and Justin Braun has got his second goal here. It's 2 1 Sacramento. I tell you what, from a Caps perspective, they will abs they'll be absolutely gutted with how they've given that goal away. I mean, Sacramento here, once they get into this position by the byline, they're ruthless, and he just takes his time, picks out a great pass to Justin Braun, and in the end, he doesn't let him down. It's wonderfully taken from his standpoint, gets across both the goalkeeper and the defender, and guides it in. But that all comes from sloppy defending. They had two chances to clear their lines. Blasco tries to lob it over somebody. Now, sometimes confidence can go, can go over the line into a bit of silliness, and I think in those type of areas, that's where you just keep it defensively simple. Don't allow them to get a cheap goal from a lack of defensive uh, play. In the air, they've gift one to the Republic. And once they did, the Republic got into a great area with a bit of good quality themselves, and they punished the Caps for it. It's a sign of a good side. It's a real sucker punch for the Caps because they've worked their way back into this game very well. And it's one that was easily preventable. So I think they'll be disappointed without that goal. And the substitution that was coming for Sacramento is now changed after that goal is. They keep things similar and the same. Bustos tries to play it to Sandu. It's cut out there by Kiffy. Bustos goes to try and win it back. Can't do so. Thompson to Clementa all the way back to Daly and we'll have to see what type of resolve and what type of answer WFC 2 has after falling behind by a goal yet again here at UBC against the run of play here in the second half. WFC 2, by the way, back at Thunderbird Stadium next Sunday, September 13th against Orange County Blues FC. Tickets are only $15. Live music, food trucks, family activities, good vibes, and a whole lot more. Some great soccer as well. Come on out, support WFC 2 here at T-Bird Stadium. September the 13th as they host Orange County Blues. Tickets again, just $15. And now the substitution is coming. As Thompson will be leaving the match. And Gabe Jissy will be entering. Become a fan of the USL on Facebook for exclusive league news and interactive content. And also follow at USL on Twitter, to become a league insider, join club conversations and have a chance at exclusive giveaways. Lots of ways to stay in touch with the teams of the USL. WFC2 trailing 2-1 here at Thunderbird Stadium. On a beautiful Sunday, Labor Day weekend. The Caps with a little bit of work to do here to try and knot this up at 2 2. Bustos racing through the middle, plays in Mackenzie Pridham. Seymour out wide to win. Win goes forward. Pridham does well to spin away from his mark. Wind goes down in the box. Mm. Blasco gets dance around there, and Seymour does a good job of tracking back with the Caps left back finding his way from getting spilled in the 18. No foul given, though, by referee Marquez.
Yeah, that looked like he draw a little, drew a little bit of contact, Craig. Be interesting. We'll, a little look at it closely. A couple moments. Ball out for a Vancouver throw in. Sandu up to take it. Lewis. No messing about there by Vukovic. Oh boy. Back comes Sacramento looking for more. Huge stop though by Paulo Tornagi on the Republic counter. Yeah. A little bit of sloppy defending by the two center backs for the White Caps, but indecision. And what happens is at this stage of the game, when you do have a bit of tired legs, they become tired minds as well. And uh, you can see the, the two center backs sort of, you have it, I have it, you have it. Cher doesn't hesitate. He's in. Great strike on goal. Probably better if he went low and across goal. Probably would have been made it 3 1 high and dry. But nice save. Nice firm hand by Trinagi to guide it around his post. Ball headed away there by Nitty. The Whitecaps, they're going to be making another substitution here. The pro debut of one Thomas Gardner. Fantastic to see. 17 year old, just signed out of their residency program. And I know they, I had a great chat with Alan about him, and he speaks super highly of the young man. You know, he's very quick in possession urgent is actually probably exactly what the caps need at this point of the game happy to get on the ball obviously at his age the physical aspect of the game is going to come naturally but delighted for this young man to get his opportunity he's going to get a nice little run too we're not talking about gift wrap two minutes here he's going to get at least with injury time at least 15 or so minutes mom and dad are in attendance as well Thomas Gardner, what a moment for him as he steps onto the park for the very first time, replacing the captain, Tyler Roseland. And a big round of applause for the 17-year-old, who was actually quite a good little hockey player back in the day. Had to pick about the age of 12, grade 7, that he decided to go with a soccer career, and now he's taking part in his first professional match. Uh, it's great to see. You can almost see the Caps looking to go almost to a 4-4-1-1, or sorry, a 4-1-4-1, with Gardner releasing a little bit more high into a more advanced position, almost in line with Bustos. A little bit of a change of formation by Alan Koch, but I could tell you it gives, gives you goosebumps to think about what the young man's thinking right now. This is uh, 15 minutes that will live with him for the rest of his life. And I'm delighted for the young man. It's great. And the best part being, he has absolutely no pressure on him. He can just go out and express himself. And I hope that's what we see. Got his first touch there to Seymour. WFC2 down a goal here. And I guess, too, when you talk about development, you talk about building a club and putting players into positions to learn. That's what it's all about, because in a 2-1 game <laughs> down against the team here, you might be surprised a little bit that they're making a substitution with a, a raw 17-year-old rookie. But it, it just goes to show you the vision and, and the game plan that is being followed here by this Vancouver side and that they won't waver from that. No, and uh, they can't waver from it. it. The way they've managed this environment this year has been spot on for me. And I think the, the most pleasing aspect is, uh, is at this stage of the season where the Caps are definitely looking like probably going to mathematically almost on the outside looking for playoffs. It's a great opportunity to turn some of their attention toward what they're going to see for next season. And this is no different. Put the young man out there, give him a little bit of a run, give him that taste, give him that experience, that feel, and see how he does. Because he's not certainly 17, he's not going to be judged on this 15 minutes. This is just gravy for the kid. Go play, have fun, enjoy it. You see that was a bit of a knee there into the, in his bat, lower back, it looked like. 
to see more. As you see Bustos slipping on the captain's armband with Rosen leaving the park and, and again a, a, another learning opportunity and, and I guess a, a show of confidence in the young Marco Bustos of how far he's come. You think about where he was at the beginning of the year until now as we edge towards the end of the season. What a fantastic moment for him. Yeah, I mean, the kid's really turned his season around. He started uh, off with an injury, and when you get an injury early in a season, it can really hurt you throughout. But he's come back nicely, especially in this environment. He's put, himself, he's put his best foot forward so that when he's asking a Carl Robinson or any of his staff when they're here watching, which they, we know they always are, that he can say, no, you know what, I, I, I spent my time in the USL wisely despite my age. Them putting the armband on him is a little tap, is a little bit of a compliment to him from, from his teammates and his staff. Seymour gets up awkwardly in the middle of the park and tries to gather himself with referee Marquez watching and those we'll ones to... are awkward. Probably take him a couple minutes to walk him up. I expect he would do so though. Although looks like they're getting a couple more players ready to come on a sub. Looks like uh, Allen's probably going to use his last two subs here, Craig. Ian Christensen and Billy Schuler. will enter the match here for the final nine minutes plus stoppage time. As Seymour's afternoon is over. And Ian Christensen is the first onto the field. And then Billy Schuler will be leaving and the substitution coming off is Jackson Farmer as well as Seymour. So maybe Vancouver will be going with just three in the back here to try and get a goal back. Yeah, it certainly looks like it and, uh, at this stage of the game. Alan Koch just rolling the dice, hoping he can get something out of it. Like we said, it, it, they got their goal and it was just deserved. The, the reply by Sacramento was very preventable. But that's not to say they can't get themselves another one here, Craig. There's still plenty of football to play. With injury time, you're looking at at least another 10 minutes. Lopez tries to nod that forward and does. Looks for the return ball from Sherrod. Doesn't get it. And Christensen now to Lewis. Cuts inside. Sends it up looking for Pridham. Bustos quick to that. Kiffy. To Clementa. Sends it forward to Braun who has two goals here for Sacramento. This afternoon. Nicely taken ones as well. Lewis can't get by Kiffy. Pridham. His touch lets him down just a little bit there as he tries to split the back four. Clementa just hoofs it away. Tornagi up to play it. Sacramento. Looks to sit back a little bit here and just make it difficult for the Whitecaps to break them down and will no doubt look to create something on the counter. Barrera. Braun chasing after it with Christensen on him. Gardner, the youngster, sprays it ball wide nicely to Victor Blasco. Blasco helps set up Vancouver's lone goal so far. That ball trying to get to Lewis, cut out. They're still going forward with an intent to get back in this game, Craig. Gonna, it's going to require a little bit more quality than we just saw there. But the intent is there, and uh, you'd like to think the Caps will get at least one more chance in this game. It's 
whether they take her or not. That'll whether they give up anything with uh, a little bit lighter of a defensive lineup that they're showing now. Make sure you visit the new USL soccer.com get the latest news live stats and check out the new social media hub as well. Nike is a proud partner of the USL follow at Nike soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike soccer information. As Jissy sends that ball across the face of goal. Good hustle there by Lopez to Braun, plays it back. Blasco and Gardner trying to win it for Vancouver and Lopez dances forward. Braun for the hat trick. Tornagi handles that quite easily. Well, you can expect with the amount of players that the Caps are sending forward now that there's gonna be bigger openings for, for, for the Republic. Did manage to take advantage of it there, but it, it all comes from a little bit of quality again from Lopez. He's operating at a slightly higher level than many of the players in this pitch. He's a very good player. And then they can't cash in for their third goal, and it's uh, still enough time. Yeah, Justin Braun has given the Caps headaches all day, Craig. Some of his movement's been excellent. He drops deep to get on the ball. He also acts as a classic number nine, almost like a target player. And Braun has uh, left the match. Derek Foran enters in, and as it looks like the Republic have gone the other way. The Whitecaps playing with three at the back. The Republic now bringing in another defender and taking off the front runner, Justin Braun, who has both goals for Sacramento here. Blasco trying to play his way out of trouble, but gives it away to the substitution Foran. Who plays in Lopez. Oh. Rodrigo Lopez headed to the corner. Watched there by Nitty. Nitty does well to win that ball quickly. And Blasco will try and build up the attack. Bustos. I think the thing from Blasco, we certainly have alluded to how much he offers attacking wise, but even there, that's far too easy. Lopez skips by him like he's not there. And then at least show an urgency to go and get the ball back, but he stands still. And I think that'll disappoint Alan Koch a little bit. See, his body language is not very positive. But <laughs> funny thing is how much he does add in these time attacking areas. As the ball gets worked there for the Caps right now, that's where he can really hurt the opponent. Well done there by the youngster Gardner. Clever play from the 17 year old as the Caps keep possession, but right now they need to find a way to break down the Republic, who have all but one of their players behind the ball. Blasco cuts it in, and that's just cleared away. Nitty will be the first one to it, though. Launches it forward. Sandu to Christensen. Looking for Lewis. Clementa wins that. And Jissy now will look to go for a run on the right hand side. Tornagi plays it forward to win. Christensen gets on the ball and Bustos slips into a little pocket and receives. Marco Bustos now wearing the captain's armband for WFC2. Racing up the right hand side, plays the one two down the right hand side. Good stuff's here from Marco Bustos. Tries to cut back inside, looking for some support. Nice defending there from Sacramento. Excellent run by Bustos, though. He's trying to make something happen. He's trying to get his team some Alaska equalizer. And it's encouraging to see. Again, you forget how young he is. He's just, he's, uh, he's got so many years ahead of him. And it shows up, he's taken that armband and he's not just wearing it. He's implementing it, and he's showing that, you know what, I'm gonna try and take the game by the scruff of the neck here, see if I can get at something for our team today. Joaquin Rivas. 
will be the next substitution here for Sacramento. In really no hurry here, even though referee Marquez is ushering the Republic player off the park. As we've hit the 90 minute mark here. And you have to think with the injury to Seymour and a few other stoppages, there will be quite a bit of time added here at the second half of action. As WFC2 try to get a goal back, trailing two to one. Tornaghi. Great first touch by Tornaghi there. So he's had a little chat to Nad uh, Nitty. In the end, he does well to get the Caps back going forward. James Kiffey wins that with Victor Blasco. Trying to get to the ball. Bustos with some space. Bustos gets it back, goes to ground. Referee Marquez does not blow the whistle for a foul. And WFC2 will regroup. Nitty looks for the long hit and hope. Blasco, all he could do with that ball, though, is head it back to Sandu. Christensen gets on it. And it's also difficult to break down a team that's just sitting behind the ball. Yeah, I mean, the subs by uh, Sacramento showed their intent. They're just looking to kill this game off. Meanwhile, Ann's putting extra attacking players on. So it's going to be hard for the Caps to find much space around the 18. Christensen's ball for Lewis cut out. And Jissy now will try to race away. Good defending by Christensen there. Doesn't get sucked into a foot race with a very speedy player. Just gets his body across and draws the foul. Gives an opportunity for at least one more attack for the Caps. And you see how deep Bustos has come to get on the ball. Blasco stepping inside. He has some room now to maneuver. Victor Blasco plays it forward. Pridham to Lewis. Could this be the opportunity for Vancouver? Lewis spins away as Sacramento collapses nicely back around the ball. Bustos. Back to Christensen. Tries to force it into Gardner. He loses it. And now Sacramento will counter. Sherrard goes down there. Oof. Referee Marquez says not having anything of it. Sherrard and Nitty still on the ground having a chat, a little cuddle. But I tell you what, Craig, looked a bit, it could have been a foul there. I mean, there was a lot of contact. Caps got, looked like they may have gotten away with one there, but in the end, Marquez says play on and Caps are hoping that they could probably get one more opportunity here. Time's getting thin. Bustos. Here comes the replay. Sherrod's in. Goes, takes probably an extra touch he doesn't need. The minute Nitty goes down, if there's contact, it could be a foul, but definitely not a tackle. The minute Nitty goes to ground, what you often see is the attack player try and draw contact by himself. And I think in that opportunity, he wasn't drawing, it was trying to sell the contact. And there was no buyer in referee Marquez. His time has been added here. And you have to think there's just a few ticks of the clock. The digital score board down on the field has not been working for substitutions and time added on. So we're going a little bit by Braille up here. But you have to think that it's close. About 30 seconds to go here at UBC. 30 seconds for Vancouver to try and get an equalizer as Lewis switches it to Sandu. The Caps have to find a way to push forward. Maybe they'll do it through Victor Blasco. Blasco, clever move inside to Gardner. Gardner. Wide to win. Lewis sends it up. Chest down. And Schuler just over the top, and that may be the last chance, and it is for Vancouver. 
as Sacramento clinches a playoff spot with a victory here at UBC 2-1 near final. Although a much better second half for Vancouver. I think Alan Koch will be really pleased with how they reacted at half at, at halftime. And, uh, you know, when they get that last chance, when the clock's ticking down late in the game, you're hoping for that one last chance. And now is it not able to keep the, do the ball down under the bar. But from a Whitecaps perspective, I just felt that the, the second half was a, a big lift. And I thought when they got back into the game at 1-1, it was thoroughly deserved. Some really nice attacking play. But I think they'll be disappointed how they let Sacramento back in. It was just the manner of which they let him back in. It came from a couple, as they'd say in tennis, unforced errors. And in the end, Sacramento pulled away. But it was an entertaining game from two teams that like to play football. And you have to think, too, with a veteran uh, group like Sacramento, they just took advantage of their one opportunity. And really, from a road perspective, they, they had a very solid first half. But the second half, they just needed that one chance. And I, I think that just probably speaks to the different philosophies in the organization. One team is pushing to get a Major League Soccer franchise, and they have a bit of a little bit more veteran. The other group is a little younger and maybe will make the odd mistake or two as they grow. Spot on, Craig. Just shows it. And who got the goal? A guy with a little bit of MLS experience, a little bit of nonce, noose. And he took both his goals very well. And uh, that's what the sign of very good teams, uh, or good teams, is they punish, they take their opportunities, you make a mistake, they take the, they punish them for it. The youngster, Thomas Gardner, 17 years old, making his pro debut, and, and what an opportunity, what a chance, and, and, and what a statement in a lot of ways for this Whitecaps organization that they find a young Canadian kid and they give him his opportunity despite the fact they were down a goal and y you could yeah. often say that Alan Koch might have went for the victory but I I think what he went for here was the experience yep and uh, you know speaks volumes well he's going in with a plan and it's not just reactionary from the staff perspective they have clearly defined goals and one of them at this stage of the season is to give young players opportunities and the, I think from a positive standpoint, he didn't look out of place at all. From a physical standpoint, he still looks like a boy playing with men. But from a technical standpoint, I thought he did very well. Some of his possession was very good, very crisp. I think he'll be pleased with his 15 minutes. And uh, nothing like a feeling of making your debut. And I'm very happy for the kid. Most kids don't get an opportunity at 17 to make your professional debut. So kudos to the Caps for giving their young players opportunities and kudos to, for, to him for being ready when the opportunity presented itself to put in the type of performance that he did in the 50 minutes. I think he can be very happy with his performance. Two, the White Caps have two more games here at UBC to finish out the regular season as they try and finish things off in style. That next game here is Next Sunday, September the 13th, as the Orange County Blues come to town. Live music, food trucks, family activities, good vibes, and of course some great soccer entertainment as well. Tickets, just $15. The Caps back in action here in the USL play September 13th against Orange County. Your final score here from David Sidhu Field out at the Point Grey campus at UBC, 2-1. Sacramento Republic FC beat WFC2 as Sacramento clinches a playoff spot. They're looking to repeat as champions in the USL. And the Vancouver Whitecaps, they're looking to improve week in, week out as they finally return back home after an extended road trip. Maybe didn't get off to the start they wanted, but the second half much better than the first and lots of positives to build on for next weekend's action. On behalf of Mark Rogers, I'm Craig McEwen, and our entire broadcast team wants to wish you all a great rest of your Labor Day weekend, and we'll see you all again next Sunday here from T-Bird Stadium.